Hello, bronies out there in YouTube land. Once again, this is Hawkplane, and welcome to part 7 of my Pony Analysis series. I know I missed last week. I've been crazy busy thanks to school, but I'll be making it up with not just one, but two videos coming up in the next few days. So let's not waste any more time and cut right to the chase. Pony Analysis number 7. Yep, it's the big cheese herself, Princess Celestia. Ruler of Equestria and, until recently, mentor to Twilight Sparkle. And as ruler, she's pretty much in charge of, well, everything. That is, at least while the sun's still up. But who is she? Some would say she's a tyrant, others would say she's a troll, and yet others would characterize her as a sexual predator. But is this who she really is? No, of course not. This is still a kid's show after all, and frankly that would make for a rather dark, disturbing, and creepy interpretation. I mean, what are you thinking? But those fan interpretations are still out there, and explore what really makes her tick from my perspective. And speaking of perspective, personal perspective. I actually rather like Celestia as presented in the show, and prefer to stick with that interpretation over the fan perspectives, which really seem to be there just for shock value. Uh, well, with one exception, but we'll get to that in a minute. I do think that her canon personality serves her in the show very well. Strong, maternal, wise, yet not overly stuffy, and I think that really fits with the series. But what about those more questionable fandom personality traits? Where do they come from? Well, for Molestia, it's easy. It started off as this internet meme. But it really gained further traction from the popular Tumblr blog, Ask Princess Molestia, which was recently taken down amidst a ton of controversy. And if you want more on that, you can check out my own videos on the subject. With well, Tyrant Celestia and Trollestia, I think it's a little less clear. There are ideas that seem to just sprout from the fandom naturally without any one specific origin. But why is this? Why did these ideas take hold in the fandom? Well, one simple answer would be what I suggested above, shock value. A quick and easy way to appear cool and edgy, or get a cheap laugh, is to take something innocent and put a much darker spin on it. But why Celestia herself, as opposed to, say, Fluttershy, one of the most innocent characters? Well, Celestia adds a regal, wise, and stately side that is just made for subversion in this manner, by portraying her as anything but that. As they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and I think this applies to targets of comedy as well. The second, and I think bigger, reason is the sense of ownership that fans have over these characters. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like the fans are entitled or anything. Rather, they have become such a part of us that we feel inspired to take things out of the bounds of the show and freely experiment with characterization. This is especially prevalent with a character again, like Celestia, who, though she does have a strong personality, only shows one or two sides of it in the show whenever we do see it at all. This leaves fans feeling free to play with the portrayal a little bit more. This kind of flexibility, by the way, is a good example of the show's strong writing, because they create characters that we want to see in these different kinds of situations and permutations. So then what exactly is she like if she's not like these fan interpretations? Well, on one level, she is exactly how she is perceived by her subjects. Very stately, regal, wise, full of grace. She is gentle and motherly, and you can even hear it in her voice. My dearest Twilight, you must come to Canterlot at once. She is some pony who is full of wisdom and loves to provide guidance and sage advice to her subjects, particularly her faithful student, or former faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. Because of this, she's not only a great leader, but she's also a very powerful and respected mentor. But while I wouldn't go as far as saying it's all a facade, I think there's more to it. There's a side of her that for lack of a better word, is a little more human. Now, remember the thing I said before about the exception for the shock value suggestion for our fandom personalities? Well, I think this is where part of it comes in, and that's the idea of Celestia. I actually enjoy the idea of Celestia as a bit of a troublemaker in this sense, and not in a mean-spirited way, but in a fun way, particularly personified by this scene. A thousand pardons, your majesty. That's quite all right, thank you. I see it, honey bun. Oh, um, thank you. Not at all, your highness. Thank you again. Oh, but of course, your majesty. Gotcha. 
My personal headcanon, by the way, is that Luna and Celestia have their own sisterly war of pranks going on between them, but that's just me. And of course, there's a the whole Grand Gallop and Gallop. I was thrilled you were all <coughs> attending. I was hoping you could liven things up a bit. Oh uh, yeah, liven things up. Right. Now I'm not saying she's a troll completely, or at all, but I think that in light of these moments, she shows that she's some pony who does not really favor the stuffiness and rigid formality that comes with her position. It's something that she has to deal with and put up with to help preserve the image of the infallible leader but at the same time, it seems like she would rather break the ice and have other ponies more comfortable in their presence. Again, this suggests that deep down in her core, there's a part of her that is just like everyone else. Anyway, she's not all fun and games, of course. There's a very serious side to her, and believe me, you do not want to cross her when you see it. Whether you're Discord, Chrysalis, or even Nightmare Moon, she will do all she can to stop you and stand between you and the rest of her subjects. Shining armor to perform his spell. But now that you have so foolishly revealed your true self, I can protect my subjects from you. I'm looking how serious she is. This is a point that you do not want to cross. <laughs> Until she gets nerfed like that. But still, there's also a side of her that people don't seem to know, take notice as much of, and that is that in spite of her motherly, sort of kind and warm qualities, that she's also rather cunning and incredibly sharp. But not in an evil way, mind you. But in a way that, well, she knows exactly what to say to others to get things done. Even if it might not be the most obvious route. She really is a master manipulator in this way. I mean, look at her entire plan against Nightmare Moon that revolved around this concept. And there she gives the impression of not believing Twilight's news of Nightmare Moon's revival, and she simply tells Twilight to help plan for a summer sun celebration. She knew that Twilight, in finding friends like she did through the holiday planning, would unlock the secrets of the elements of Harmony and save Equestria. Similarly, look at how she handled the Discord situation in Return of Harmony. All she did, all she did, was resend her letters. But she knew what Discord was trying to do to Twilight, and she knew exactly the thing that Twilight needed to hear to get her back in the game. A great leader isn't someone who can tell others what to do, but rather they know what to say to others to get them to do what is necessary. This is a side of Celestia that is extremely sharp and clever, and I hope to see more of it in the future. And now, a common factor among all of these qualities is that Celestia is more than the cultivated regal image that she gives off to her followers. This is a princess who really wears the weight of the crown on her. She takes her position very seriously, but at the same time is really human, again, for lack of a better word, underneath it. I've got the feeling that while she enjoys her life, she does feel like being princess is an important responsibility to live up to, and she really bears the weight of that responsibility. It's a responsibility where she has to make tough decisions for the sake of her subjects, as seen in the banishment of her sister. Oh dear sister, I am sorry, but you have given me no choice. Mind the fan interpretations, she clearly did this with tears in her eyes and a heavy heart. While it was something that she knew she must do. She's not pervert, tyrant, or troll. Well, maybe a little bit of a troll. But she's definitely more than what she's seen at first glance. Anyway, that wraps up another episode. Hopefully you enjoyed my first non-main six analysis and got some more inside the Celestia. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time, which will be very soon, on another Pony analysis. Check out some of my other videos and be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.